Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I am going to be doing a end of 2023 wrap up. So, um, I meant to do a wrap up at the end of December and then just time got away from me and I went out of town for Christmas and everything. So, this video is going to be all the books that I read last, I guess, quarter or third of 2023, which is October, November, and December. Overall, I can give you, like, my stats of 2023 in this video, too, just to finish all of that out, and then I don't have to make another video for that. Um, but for 2023, I actually ended up reading 79 books, which was a little bit more than the goal I set, but, like, less than my overarching goal I was trying to reach which was 100 books but that's okay because like I'll take the 79 books because life was lifing in 2023 so I can tell you now that majority of those books were read on audible audio like audio was my lifesaver in 2023 I don't know what happened but from the beginning of 2023 until the end I somehow made that transition from reading just visual bo physical books to reading mainly audiobooks and just it helped me out a lot in just regards of being able to finish the books that I want to finish enjoying the books a lot more um I'm gonna try and read do a better job of reading like a mixture it, this year not just audio but also try and read physically still because i want to read all of them but for right now i think audio is going to be my main source of uh consumption for the time being which i'm okay with and then i'm trying to think of what else i know i mostly read fantasy like that was my overarching genre last year and I'm also okay with that. I feel like my ratings were mostly majority between three and five stars. I don't think I read a lot of two, one, one and two star books for the most part. And I don't think I DNF'd a lot of books. Also, the biggest goals that I had was to read down my TBR and then finish some series. Because I'm actually pretty bad about that. And I actually got... So, looking at this number right now and a lot of my books were packed up so this is still kind of amazing to me but um i started last year with 265 unread books on my physical tbr and not gonna lie midsummer i did unhaul a lot of books but then i really just worked hard last year to just read only my physical books um and if i read anything that wasn't i didn't physically own about it from the library i didn't buy it right away so now looking uh when i looked at the end of 2023 i ended up having 190 left which i feel like is a good chunk gone and so i'm pretty proud of myself and so now i'm gonna start with that 190 for this year and i'm trying to work that down even further even if i could just get rid of 90 books and get it down to like 100 physical unread books that'd be great so that's probably a new goal for this year when it comes to finishing series i think i did a pretty decent job um i finished the throne of glass series which and then i finished straight the strange dreamer duology i caught i finished the fireborn i started and finished the fireborns trilogy last year I started and finished the diviner series last year so i think i did a pretty good job of just like catching up on series and then finishing some of the series that i ended up starting last year so overall good job good job okay so getting into the wrap up because that's what i said i was gonna do in october i ended up reading four books so i will be honest this last half of 2023 is when like my mental health and just i became like my busy busiest oddly enough so like october i had like three trips back to back to back and so I literally think I was only home for one weekend and then the other weekends I was just gone so that affected my reading a lot and then November I just my depression just hit me out of the blue it just like really hit me and so readings my reading suffered then and then same with October October not only was I still in my depression but also it's the holidays so it was my busiest time because I was trying to get everything done for work getting the kids ready to go on break and then also I was traveling for my holidays and everything so overall just things hit a turn but i still managed to read what i could read and i'm still proud of that 
So in October, I read four books. So the first book I read was In the Weeds by B.K. Borison. I gave this 3.5. So this was the second book in her, like, companion series, Love Light Farm companion series. So I read Love Light Farms, I think, the beginning of last year, and I really loved it. I thought it was so good. I thought it was refreshing. I really loved her characters. I loved her writing. Um, this one didn't hit as hard as the first one did for me. I still really enjoyed her writing. I still really re enjoyed her characters. I still think she does a really good job of just, like, having such a, like, refreshing story I don't know how else to describe it but for me it feels refreshing when I'm reading her world so overall I enjoyed it um but just as not as much as the first one so that's why I gave it 3.5 stars I'm still going to continue on in the series and read the other the last two companion novels um I think the last one comes out this summer maybe and go from there but overall it was okay um it from what I remember, it follows the one of the farmhand that you meet in the first book. I can't think of his name right now. And um, the socialite you meet in the first book. So in the first book, um, it's a friends to lovers story. And the girl owns this like Christmas tree farm. And it's in the red. And so she joins this social media competition run by this socialite um, or this media influencer. Um that likes to draw business to draw attention to small businesses and so the girl wins in that book so in that book you meet this social media influencer that's the main character of in the weeds and so her and the farmhand um before the entire series i guess started they had a fling at a conference and then um they meet again when she comes out for that compet to like reward the girl for winning the competition or whatever so in this book it picks off kind of it picks up kind of after that and she comes back into town because she needs a break from her job and just like the social media aspect and just she wants to get reacquainted with her life and just be in the now in the present in the real and so her and the guy kind of basically hook back up again so then i read my first book for black queen was the plot is murder by vm burns which was the group book for our apothecary i gave this 3.5 stars i thought it was an okay story it was kind of my first real cozy mystery um besides the finley donovan series and um i thought it was cute i thought it was interesting i kind of enjoyed the story within the story elements though i know a lot of people did not enjoy that aspect of the book and that's okay um it follows this lady whose husband just died and so she quits teaching or like kind of retires from teaching and she decides to do what they had dreamed of doing which was open to open up a bookstore slash coffee shop thing so she does that and then she gets embroiled in this like murder mystery because a body shows up outside her shop and now she has to figure out who is killing people around her store and everything then i read a spell for trouble by esme addison this was also a black Halloween pick and i gave this 3.5 as well this one was not as interesting it was like interesting but not it was kind of boring at the same time it follows this girl whose dad's died and so she goes to visit her like estranged aunt and cousin from her mom's side and um her mom died like years and years ago and her dad kind of distanced her from them and she never really knew why and so um when she gets there she kind of finds out that they're witches and that she's a witch and that he didn't want any part of that and then there's a whole murder mystery coming to play that like her aunt is being accused of so she helps try to solve the murder and the whodunit and who's trying to frame her aunt and everything all right, and then, so I actually had a third book I was trying to read for Black Queen, and that one was Hollywood Homicide by Kelly Garrett. But I'm going to be completely honest, I started that book, I could not get into it. I didn't really care about the characters or the murder, and so I just DNF'd it. It was a soft DNF'd, but I DNF'd it. So, unfortunately, that was a, that was a bust. But the last book I did read in October was Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray, and this was the third book nope this was the second book in the diviner series and i gave this four stars um i really enjoyed the first book i thought it was so creepy and uh, yeah i was so intrigued by what was happening the second book was just the same i was it was creepy as hell but i was loving every minute of it and the characters and the storyline so i am really glad that i buddy re buddy read this entire series with 
um, Robin and Ashley because it was such a fun time and it was fun texting them about our theories and just how creepy this book was. Like I was reading it in the daytime and I was still creeped out a little bit by a lot of the stuff that was taking place. So definitely intriguing. Moving on to the to November, I read three books in that month. So the first book I read was The Inheritance of, a, of Orchidia Divina by Zoraida, Zor, Zoraida Cordova. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering these names. Um, I gave this one four stars. I know Monet really loved this, and so she had been pushing a lot of us to read it, and so I finally sat down and made it a point to read it in November. And I actually thought the storyline was really interesting. I liked the aspect where you start... Um, you're following this family from the very beginning and so I liked that you were getting like one chapter from the present so um you're getting the perspective in these like present chapters from the uh they're following the perspectives of her great-grandchildren or her grandchildren and then the past like the, the next chapter would be a chapter from the past and those are from her perspective and so when you start the story, you find out that her fa their family is cursed and they don't know why. And so instead of asking her because she's legitimately turned into a tree, they have to figure it out on their own. And so um, basically the three cousin, the three youngest cousins, I guess they're the youngest, um, take it upon themselves to help solve this mystery in order to basically save their family and Orca Orcadia. Um, but I thought it was just a really good concept of family lines and the effects that past trauma within the family can play on future generations and just, there's just a lot of things you can get from this story and so I really enjoyed that and the beautiful way it was told and then the characters and how nuanced they were and there was just so many aspects in play and I loved the fact that like as you're reading about Orchidia and they're learning about their grandmother they're like she was not perfect she was not a perfect lady she was like very very flawed but she was also a product of her environment and all the things that led up to her being who she is and so yeah it was just interesting I loved the magical realism I loved all of it so definitely uh, b agree with Monet that this is a very very good story and one of my top contenders it almost like not that I'm comparing the two but it gave me the same vibes as the beautiful ones by Silvia Moreno Garcia like I abs that's I think that's my favorite book by her and the vibes that I got from that are the same vibes that I got from this and so I don't know take with that what you will <laughs> all right the next book I read in November was Fury Song by Rosaria Monda so this was the last book in the Fireborn trilogy I gave this one three stars this series overall wasn't terrible but it just was not my favorite either I think that overall this was just an okay series. The political elements were okay, the characters were very flawed, which I think was purposeful and that's okay, but just like a lot of the actions that were taking place, I was just like this may be kind of unnecessary. Or I feel like if you just had a conversation with somebody else before you did this, it may have worked out better for you. but. For what I could tell you about this series, because this is the last book so I don't want to spoil it, it follows um, two kids essentially, it's a YA, um, that grew up in this mil militaristic regime and so they are brought up to be dragon riders and what people don't know is the boy that you're following, he is the son of the leader of the old regime and nobody knows that because I already thought he's thought thinks he's dead because um, prior to everything that's taking place there was a rebellion and a lot of people went in and like killed off all the royal family besides this boy or so they think and so um, when you start the story they're both high-ranking um, dragon riders in their academy and they're competing to be the top writer in their nation or whatever and so 
as they go through this competition, they're starting to realize that maybe their government isn't as perfect as they thought, maybe there is a lot more corruption than they realized. Also, maybe they didn't kill off all of the old regime that they thought they did. I'm gonna say, if you're gonna compare this and Fourth Wing, they're both not the greatest, but Fourth Wing was a little bit more entertaining for me on my end than Fireborn. But take that with a grain of salt. Alright, so the last thing, the last thing I read in November was Before the Devil Breaks You by Libra Bray, and this was the third book in the Diviner series. I gave this four stars as well. Again, love this series. It was so good. Um, well, I loved this book. It was very good. Just as creepy, just as interesting. Didn't really know where she was going to take this story. Super, super great. Alright, and then we're moving on to December, the last month in 2023. So, I read three books in December. So the first book I read was Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. This was the sequel to Fourth Wing. I gave this 3.5 stars. <laughs> was it great? No. <laughs> was I still entertained? Yes. I will say I think she would have benefited with this by not publishing it as quickly as she did. I think she, if she had sat on this a little bit longer between publications of the first book and this one, I think she could have made it a lot better because there were a lot of aspects that I felt were either boring, unnecessary, or like didn't make sense. Next I read The Merciless Ones by Namina Forda. I gave this four stars. This was the last buddy read between me, Ashley, and Ray. Um, I really enjoyed this. I liked the first one a lot. It follows this kingdom, this African style kingdom, that believes any woman who is born with, the gold, with gold blood is a demon. So the main character we're following, she turns out to realize, she never realized until I think she like cut herself on accident or something that she has gold blood and so she is forced into this army of girls who have the similar color blood as her and they are forced to fight for the king until they realize that they've been lied to and then a lot of things happen so it's really cute I really liked it. Um, not cute, but it's a really good story. I really liked the political elements. There was a good mixture of political elements, romance. Nothing overshadowed the other, and I feel like it was a good mixture of that. Plus, this journey of just her finding out who she is and why she is slightly different than the other girls with gold blood as well. But the second book was good. I liked where the journey took them. It definitely was intriguing and the ending shook me a little bit and so I'm definitely intrigued to see what she does with this third book that's coming out I think in February because she's just making this an interesting story so far. That's all I'm gonna say because I don't want to spoil it but I think you guys should read this. I feel like nobody's talked about this like it came out and then nobody really talked about it so I'm talking about it and I'm saying you guys should definitely check this out because I think it's a really good story, and I think it's very underrated for how good it is. Alright, and then the last book in December that I read was The King of Crows by Libba Bray. So this is the last book in the Diviners Quartet series, whatever. And I give this three stars. Okay, so this last book was such a letdown. And I think it's the same idea that I had with... Throat of Glass, where I got to the last book, like, I was really enjoying the middle of the series, and then I got to the last book, and I was very disappointed. I think I feel the same way here, whereas, I, I wasn't very disappointed with this book, but I was disappointed enough, um, because the first three books are so good. They were so creepy, they kept me interested, I didn't know what was gonna happen next, there was a lot of elements coming into play, and then we get to this last book, and it was just boring. Like, as we got through the story, we were following the characters and they were all split up. I felt like a lot of it was just filler. Like, if you've ever watched Naruto, there was a lot of filler episodes in the seasons. And I felt like that's what was happening. We got to the last book and there was a lot of filler episodes before we got to the end. And I don't know if Sis just had to have a good word count or if she had to have, like, a page count specifically for this book or whatever. But if she needed to make it shorter, that's fine. I just felt like we took a lot of back roads to get to the main point of the story when we could have just like crossed the bridge. 
directly. I don't know if that makes sense, but we're just going with that the scenario or analogy or whatever. For how long it took them to get to where they needed to be to finish this story, I felt like it was too long. So if you're reading this series and you're like expecting this the ending to be like blah, please lower your expectations. Like it wasn't terrible, but it just wasn't where the other three books were for me. So, those are all the books that I read from October to December of 2023. These are the final books that I read in 2023. So hopefully you guys heard, enjoyed me hearing me talk about them. Let me know um, some of the books that you enjoyed finishing the year with uh, in the comments down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave all that in the comment section as well or an emoji whatever emoji you like. If you like the video, please like it down below. If you want to see more videos from me, please hit the subscribe button. You guys are awesome lives and a wonderful week.